This video is the first of several introducing to you the Sustainability Strategy Map. My name is Brett Knowles and I'm the Executive Partner at PM2 Consulting. What we're trying to do is integrate the best practices around sustainability and in particular how we measure sustainability and the best practices around performance measurement and management. So before we get underway, I should probably give you a quick briefer on what is a sustainable business. Now, we're all familiar with the triple bottom line, the bottom line that says we should be looking at how the company is performing, but also how it impacts and consumes resources from the environment and how it impacts and consumes resources from society. The simplest way to think of this is these are three different bank accounts. Now, they're all joined together in, in the world, and the idea is, to some extent, companies have been making money by taking money out of this account, the environment, and converting it into cash. So we're depleting the environment account in effort of creating greater wealth in the company. And the idea is we need to stop doing that. We need to find out how an organization can be successful without consuming more of the resources than it returns or more from society than it returns. That new break even. Now, as this model grew, we thought maybe it was a Venn diagram. Maybe if we looked at the overlap between these things. So the company has stuff it does autonomously, but within that there's an area where it can impact and relate to the environment, society, and all three. And this is the typical icon for the triple bottom line. Now, recently, some thinking has extended this to say we actually need to take a look at the system view. So think of it this way. The company lives inside of society and society lives inside of the environment. So the idea is the company consumes and returns resources from suppliers, customers and communities and that total society returns and consumes resources from the environment. In fact, if we wanted to be explicit, we'd add a couple of arrows on it. So we'd say, you know, we're consuming physical resources and returning either products or waste. And then there's the overall sort of impact just of the operational presence of the organization in the overall environment. So this is the triple bottom line. Now, we're going to come back to that in a second, but we want to step forwards and take a look at how do we measure sustainability? and business success. Now, the sustainability thing has been tricky. Most of the frameworks which exist right now, GRI, um, the UN's SDG, and so forth, are all sort of point in time assessments. Someone comes out and assesses you for where you are that moment, and also is all interview based. Now, the dilemma with that is, it's not benchmarkable, because how I interview and respond in one business could have a second business identical, but give different answers or different opinions. Uh, it's a point in time look, not an ongoing flow of value. So think of trying to value your car just once a year as opposed to tracking your mileage and how many city miles you do and so forth, which is a more ongoing trend and valuation view. And of course, I'm only getting that view once a year and it's not top of mind. So sustainability has always been a sticky wicket, but we have some ideas and how we measure business success, which of course we've been doing since, you know, the dawn of time. So best practices are emerging. The best practices on how we can measure sustainability comes from an organization called the Future Fit Foundation. Now the Future Fit Foundation has established the business benchmark. Now the business benchmark has taken the standard, you know, global challenges that we're all aware of and broken those down to what are the systems conditions, Therefore, what are the related business principles? And most importantly, taking those business principles to specific future fit business benchmark goals. Now, these 21 goals are the core things that an organization needs to do to achieve both environmental and societal break even points. So this has been a very useful tool and there are specific hard quantifiable metrics behind each one of these. The benefit of that is it allows us to benchmark them against one organization against another and have some degree of assurance that we're looking at the same thing. 
Now, best practices around performance measurement, of course, comes from the balance scorecard. The concepts that were developed in the late 90s by Drs. Kaplan and Norton that take a look at the four perspectives of how we create value in organizations. So that's sort of the, the best practices on sustainability measurement, best practices in, in strategic success or performance measurement. Now, just to join the dots for a second, that image we drew before of the three nested circles, the colorization is the same. So these business goals, which are green, relate to the environment, the blue ones relate to society, and so forth. So we're going to be maintaining that, that color scheme going forward. So now let's take a look at how it is we're going to actually convert this idea into a measurement framework. So if we take some of the best practices, we're going to you know, understand that the company is the driver of sustainability in the view that we're taking. And it has to, again, live within society. And at the same time, it's got to understand its relationship with the environment. So in this way, we can take a look at company performance, so its impact in relationship with society, its impact in relationship with the environment. So what's that look like? Well, the best practices from the balanced scorecard about measuring the company, we should be able to take this and break it into the four perspectives of the balanced scorecard. What's the organization's financial goals? To achieve that, what do they need to do to satisfy their customers? To satisfy their customers, what internal processes do they need? And then the foundation to this, what we used to call learning and growth, we now call the enablers, the core competencies, culture, and strategic assets we need to be able to maintain these processes to make our customers happy to achieve financial success. What we're adding to the balance scorecard, of course, is the society on one side and environment on the other. So this becomes a framework where we've captured the best practices around measuring sustainability and the business. Now, let's go back to those 21 goals that we saw before, right? So, for example, the first goal is energy is from renewable sources. So that's one of the 21 goals that a business must achieve. And this particular one, energy is from renewable resources, relates to the internal perspective. It's something that the company does internally towards its operations. So we can take that and put it in the internal perspective. The second goal has this dual color. It impacts both society and environment. And it's water is used in an environmentally responsible and socially equitable way. So we're going to put that one as a bridge between the internal operations, because that's what's consuming the water, and its impact right, on the environment. So we can take, in fact, all 21 of these objectives and organize them into those perspectives. Right? So there's several which are purely internal about that energy we looked at before. Operations emit no greenhouse gases. Operational byproducts are repurposed. Those are all internal. Bridging ones are things like water is used in an environmentally responsible way. Materials derived from sources that respect the welfare of ecosystems, people, and animals. Operational missions do not harm people or the environment. Operations do not encroach on ecosystems or communities. And so we've organized those 21 goals across those six perspectives of the sustainability strategy map. Now, that's the conceptual framework. We're now taking this out to a series of pilot sites and testing it with their specific strategic objectives. And the next video is going to reveal to you what our findings have been through that pilot work. In the meantime, please feel free to contact us if you're interested in participating as a pilot or have useful research and experience to weigh in on these topics. Thank you for your time.